Production funding for Behind the Headlines is made possible in part by the WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. A deeper look at the city's budget proposal tonight on Behind the Headlines. I'm Eric Barnes, president and executive editor of The Daily Memphian. Thanks for joining us. I'm joined tonight by Martavius Jones, head of the budget committee for the Memphis City Council. Thanks for being here again. Thank you for having me. Kemp Conrad is chairman of the Memphis City Council. Thank you for being here again. Thanks for having me again, Eric. I appreciate it. Shirley Ford is chief financial officer for the city. Thanks for being here. Thank you for inviting me. And Bill Drees, reporter with The Daily Memphian. I'm going to start, and I'll start with you, uh, Shirley, and, and for each of you the same question, but I'll start with Shirley. We'll go through the big picture of the budget that was proposed and, the, and a lot of the details and a lot of what's in there. But as with any budget, certain things didn't make it. So for each of you, what is the thing or type of thing that you wish were in there that you know won't be? It's just not possible for whatever reason right now. What's, what's that thing? Well, I think um, an easy question for that is on our capital improvement program. Uh, we try to limit the projects that we are going to fund through bonding uh, in any given fiscal year to those that fall below the amount of debt service that we're repaying. So that automatically puts a cap on us. This year it's 87 million. And to look at all the um, maintenance, deferred maintenance, projects that we'd like to do in any given year, it is very difficult to, to, to hew that down to 87 million. And, and that's in comparison to the 700 million, again, we'll go through this, but the $700 million is the operating budget, the that's operating. salaries, that's other things, but the capital, give an example of a capital project, just so people understand, that is in the budget. Uh, that is in the budget, the new Fraser Library, okay. the um, Whitehaven Fire Station, okay. Okay. Um, and then, of course, paving yeah. is, is a big and part that's, of that That's actually well. capital. So, I mean, off the cuff, you wish that it were double 87 million? I mean, what is, I mean, what do you need even just to kind of keep up? Well, I think just the, the very core services that we look at through our capital improvement program is between 60 and 65 a year. So that doesn't leave a lot of room uh, to bring on special projects. Yeah, yeah. Kemp, same question to you. What, what's, what's not in the budget? What's not gonna be in the budget that you wish were there and why? Well, I haven't gone through the budget yet, really, so I, I don't really uh, kind of have an answer to, uh, to that question. Uh, I, I think what I would like to do is maybe just provide a bit of context uh, about what we do. This is a $700 million business. Uh, we employ uh, 9,000 full and part-time employees. Uh, this team manages uh, a go uh, you know, the city of Memphis, which has a footprint of 340 square miles. We have 6,800 miles of road we have to manage. That's uh, LA and back three times, 3,300 miles of uh, storm and sanitary sewer. You know, we're protected by 2,000 police officers, 1,500 professional firefighters and EMTs, 40 communi community centers, 18 libraries, 17 pools. Uh, it is a big, big operation, and it's hard to do all that with a $700 million budget that only grows naturally by only $10 million per year. So because of that, we're not gonna be to do everything that we're gonna wanna do, but this team uh, over the last 10 years has done all this and managed this with no tax increase. We've doubled our rainy day fund, our reserves over the last four years. Uh, we've had two credit increases, which uh, decreases our cost of borrowing. That's about a third of our operating budget is debt service, almost two, over $200 million per year. Um, and we've cleaned about a billion dollars off our balance sheet. And so we have been very disciplined. We've leaned up city government as much as we have could. We've continued to invest in our, uh, our employees. And I think the one thing I would say I wish we could do more of, especially for police and fire, especially police have a really difficult job and do a great job every day. You really can't pay those folks enough. And this and year wish there's we what, could. 3% increase. That's right. Person. And if you look at it, I think since 2016, it, they're in probably the, about the double digits on average. It's different if you're 11 years of right. service or left, 12 and more. So we're years. doing all that we can yeah. without raising taxes. Um, you know, but I'm, do you wish that? Do you wish, do you wish in that budget were a tax decrease? Uh, I, I mean, so many people talk about the tax burden being a limiting, a limiting economic growth between the city and the county tax being so high. Sure, but I just don't think that's but that's. It's, not doable. it's absolutely not doable. I mean, I've you know, been down there now ten years. We we have made the 
hardest of decisions. We've leaned it up as much as we can, yeah. and uh, it's just not practical. But what other cities have not had a tax increase in a decade, yeah. but have continued to invest in people and have the metrics well, and the things that yeah. we've got going on in a very positive way. What was the tax rate for the city? Does anyone remember off the top of my head? Well, well we, we, <laughs> the CFO is going to look that up, Jeez. and I'm going to turn to Martavius and ask you that same question. What's, what's not in the budget, what's not going to be in the budget that you'd like to see in there? And you've well, been doing this for, for a few years now. So What's missing from it is a growing revenue stream, so that's the only thing that I wish we had in there. Uh, I would like to see a, a greater investment in youth and in children. When the city got out of the education business, I say we got out of the education funding business, but we didn't get out of the children business. So every child that attends a Shelby County, well, most children that attend a Shelby County school is a MIPA yeah. So I'd like to see, uh, and maybe during some of the discussions, we may be able to find some savings. There's some programmatic things that I'd like to see during the summertime in particular. Like youth job and camps and that kind of thing? Well, yes, there, well, there's a, there was a school in Newark, New Jersey, just on Friday nights. They ramp up and they have, an, they have a program until 11 o'clock. And so if we perhaps do that, and hopefully I, we can find some savings or revenue sources where if we can just do yeah. that every Friday night that school is out in our community centers, I think that can make a great difference. And, and, and well, no, on the education point too, and I, I agree totally with, uh, with Councilman Jones, but one way the city has led, and we started this in 2017, it's gonna be in this budget, um, actually in the budget right now, is universal needs-based pre-K. When we got out of the education funding business, it was because we funded it, we had no uh, oversight of it. This is a way now we're leveraging our money with the county, private sources, and the school system to have universal needs-based pre-K and a lot of wraparound right. things that are coming with it. So that's a huge commitment. And those early dollars, the investment at that age and even earlier, that's the best money that we can spend. And I'm proud that uh, this council and this mayor have joined together to make that a reality for okay. Memphis and Shelby County. And before I go, did you, the, ta the high tax rate. Okay, it, the high tax Memphis rate, um, this is going back to 1982 was three dollars and 43 cents and that was uh, for the period 2005 through 2007 okay. so we're currently sitting at 3.195 right. so that's a that's a huge decrease uh, right. over the time period always go to the CPA for the, for the actual <laughs> for the, the real numbers let me get Bill involved uh, you talked about debt service the city's debt service picture is improving uh, it, it, to the extent that two cents and the tax rate allocated for debt service has been shifted. Is that right? Yeah. That is correct. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the, um, if you remember back in 2015, uh, there was a lot of discussion about restructuring of the debt. And basically what that did was took the existing debt structure for the city, extended it by one year, but leveled out the debt servicing payments that were coming from the city. So through very, you know, very um, prodigious Funding, budgeting, and and gathering those resources and monitoring those resources, we actually um, improved our debt service allocations to the point that we felt very comfortable pulling these two cents off to fund uh, some new initiatives. And and at the council retreat, um, I, I guess a month ago now, you you gave the council some projections that show that by at starting in 2026. The city will have about $40 million in revenue now going toward uh, debt service that will no longer be needed for that. And it, and it is actually our um, 2027 fiscal year, right. but yes, sir. And you see a huge decrease, almost $40 million drop. Um, and so all of this hard work that we've done through the past uh, five years is really going to pay off. And you will be able to see, I mean, we'll be able to fund through our own capital pay go as opposed to issuing debt. Um, I mean, that's $40 million that we were issuing uh, or paying off in debt that we can now use capital pay go for projects. Okay. With to the two council members at the table, when when this started to happen in Shelby County government, a, a good development, I think everyone would agree, but it touched off a, a pretty vocal debate among the commissioners about what to do with that money in 2026. Uh, so this is beyond your, your, your terms of office, we should also Point, point out here, but uh, 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 are we going to see some tension around 
that extra money that comes off of debt service? 2026, the only thing we can do is speculate. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I think that the city should be strategic in its investments and what we do with that. Uh, whether it's, and I still go back to youth, what, we, what will we be doing for children? What will we be doing for police and fire and other city employees? So I can see it being contentious. I think that there were some ambitious asks from the bargaining units as far as pay raises. So I, I know that if we, if we see a $40 million extra amount of revenue, uh, there could be asked for 10, 15% raises, as, but I don't think that's possible. Mr. Chairman, uh, wh what, what do you foresee on this? A and also, in, in the present day, is there a temptation to try to take that amount of debt service, mon money coming off of debt service, and start to use it sooner than 2026? Uh, gosh, I sure hope not. I don't, I don't think that's been our practice. I think, again, I think we've been very, very disciplined. We, we take all this very, very seriously. That would be a very unserious thing uh, to do. Um, and so it's way out into the future and we have so many opportunities in front of us, but also challenges. So we're, at least myself, we're using all of our brain power, intellectual capital really to focus on um, what's in front of us right now, uh, the next year, the next four years of uh, some of my colleagues' terms, hopefully. And that's, uh, that's kind of way, uh, way down the road. It's good to start thinking about and planning, but uh, not spending a lot of time about thinking about that. Two points. One of the bargaining units proposed a 25%, I think, increase. Mm -hmm. um, bargaining units being one uh, of the uh, Correct, the, in, the in this employees. case, I think it was police. Yeah. Um, you know, again, that's... Because they're, th they're part three, of their complaint is that they, they went, what, six years without a raise through the recession, right? And they saw cuts and benefits. I mean, it goes way back, and you were on the council. That's now. right. I mean, really hard cuts. We had shows that were tense, to say the least, with you and other people from the union and other council members because of, and people from the Wharton administration because there were just big cuts being done that were painful, right? And no one liked, I don't, I don't remember anybody sitting on the show saying, oh, we're really happy to be doing no, these I mean, cuts that, to right, police and right. fire and, and so what on. We've been so working, to, yeah. I think their frustration is, well, yeah, we've had a 3% increase roughly three years in a row now, but that's after, what, six years without any sort of increase. Um, I'm not sure if it was six years without any increase, but you're, 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 you're right. And so, but we're working to get that, that back up without uh, cutting other things in city government and without raising taxes, which uh, if we did, I don't think we could lower taxes. We couldn't operate the city that way, but if we raised them, we're already at a very high rate compared <coughs> to who we compete with. One other thing we did this year with this budget is we fully fund That's where I was gonna go. the pension arc, which is something that has been many years in the making and is a very big deal, something let, that should have been done a long time ago. Let, let, me, get, let me get the CFO involved in that. Your predecessor, uh, Brian Collins, who was uh, finance director, CFO under Wharton, and then carried over into the Strickland administration, and you, you took over for him, right, Correct. after he, when he retired. He was on the show, and it, it is not, it is not, it's pretty wonky, but it was a big part of those cuts we were talking about, That's and a big right. part of the problem that the city was facing was that the, the pension, so the retirement plan for city employees, and OPEB, and OPEB which is other post-employment benefits, right, right? But that's in insurance, health insurance and other forms of benefits. retirement right. benefits, was wildly underfunded. If people remember, the state stepped in and said, not just Memphis, but other places needed to get right. it together over a five-year period. So it's no small thing, right? I mean, what is it, a $54 million contribution right. that the city made to these, these benefits, um, the pension and so on, but they weren't making those through the recession. They weren't making enough or any kind of contributions to that, right? There were years actually where, um, and, and talking in 13, 12, 13, that the city was only making a 21% contribution to their actuarially determined contribution. And so after the, um, after the conversations with the state and the establishment of the progressive funding, uh, which started, uh, 15 was our base year, it started in 16 and we had to be fully funded by FY20, and, and we are. Um, the fortunate thing that happened for FY20 is because of the uh, increase in the economy and great returns, our ADC actually went down. And that's part of the um, redu reduction in expenditures that the mayor is talking about that we're now going to put back in to our employees. But I would like to come back uh, a little bit to the, to the capital that you mentioned. Um, one of the things that we are doing is uh, the, the budget that we present is the funding is for the current year, but we produce a five-year budget. 
Internally, uh, one of the changes that I'm making is that we are going to produce internally a 10-year budget so that we have the strategic analysis behind when we finish this community center and we build this library, what's next? Where are we hitting next? And to align that with the 3.0 plan, but also to give it sustainability when those of us who, after the administration, um, there is a, there you see a strategic plan in place for what we had hoped this would look like into the future years. And the 3.0 plan is the Memphis 3.0 strategic plan. We've done a lot of shows, a lot of articles on that. And we, we may Correct. get to that where it stands with council right now, but Bill, uh, we go to Bill. Okay, uh, uh, Martavius, let, let me talk to you about, about some political realities mm -hmm. here. As budget committee chairman, how, how much play do you think there is in the budget proposal? At, at, at what point do you say, there may be some items we can change around, some priorities to change around and talk to the administration about. You know, I would have to look at it. I, uh, we haven't been presented with the actual budget books just as of yet. Maybe when we leave here, they, they very well could be in the offices yet. So I'd, I would have to look at it, and I would have to look at it in comparison to previous years as well. We can't look at things just in a vacuum. Every, let's look at it compared to last year. Let's look at it compared to two years ago. And so one of the things I always ask is how, with this incremental revenue, I know that largely it will cover the increases for fire and police, uh, fire and police pay. But what are, some, what are some other things in there? When we don't have a growing revenue stream, it's, it's hard for us to say, well, we could take from here, take from there, because these priorities have already been established. But one thing that I think will be helpful for me individually, hopefully I'm fortunate enough to be elected for four more years, is to have a 10-year outlook of how we can prioritize things and make sure we're being strategic in some of the decisions that we make today. Give me an example of a growing revenue stream. Can we talk about that? Well, um, one, of the other th one of the other things, uh, my, my Chairman Conrad mentioned the fact that we have the highest tax rate in the state. We're always being compared to Nashville. But we can't make that statement without looking at the fact that Nashville's assessed property values are twice as much as Memphis's. So they can afford to have a property tax rate half of ours because that same rate will generate the same amount of revenue that they have to function or carry out city government in Nashville in Memphis. So that, when we just make that blanket statement about that, yes, it's true, but we also have to make it relative when we talk about the actual property values, which are higher. Nashville's assessments are, are going up at a rapid rate because you have higher paying jobs coming, at, coming in and driving up the prices for those Ex for that uh, existing uh, existing uh, property values in Nashville, and so we just don't have that. Mm -hmm. Kemp, what, what what do you think about this thing of a uh, of a revenue stream that he talks about beyond the property tax? Let me say nine minutes left. I mean, it would just depend on you know on, on what kind of revenue stream it is. Um, so I, I think what we're working really hard on right now is we're somewhat limited in revenue streams by state government. Um, so what we are working really hard on is growing the tax base, uh, infill development, returning back to the core, all the infrastructure is built. We've de-annexed some areas where it cost us money over the long term and running a tight government with a great business environment and great neighborhoods where people want to come and live. And as more businesses come and more people live here, our revenues will go up. And on the question about the budget, 72% uh, of our operating budget is uh, its personnel cost. And so, um, you know, there's not a lot, you got the, the, you've got that, then you've got the debt service. There's not a lot more in the operating budget and the capital budget. We do do a pretty good job with our five-year plan. Everybody kind of has a sense. We've all been working together now for, you know, this is the fourth year. And uh, so we know what's kind of in the pipeline. And uh, Shirley and the mayor and, and the team do, have done a great job communicating with the council. We communicate with them. So when that budget address is delivered, a lot of the priorities that the council members want they're already baked in because we've been communicating the whole time and that's what's led to a pretty professional process the last several years and I think we'll have this year under the leadership of our budget chairman, uh, Councilman Jones, and our CFO, uh, right. Mrs. Ford. <clears throat> Just a, it, roughly speaking, or you may know exactly, he, it, it's a good point that Kemp has made of 72% of that operating budget is people. Of that, the vast majority is police, fire, and EMS, and then um, probably public works public after works that. Public works and solid waste. Right. All the kinds of things that people probably beat up the mayor. The I don't right. speak for the mayor, but when he is on, right. he talks about if he goes to a county, you know, Correct. any sort of town hall, any sort of meeting, people want, you know, they want less crime, so that's police. They certainly want fire services to be where they are. They want more roads and paving and upkeep. I mean, it's, it's a tough one in terms of 
it's not a bunch of bureaucrats in the basement, you know, who the, the kind of stereotypical ugly look at government, you know, is filled is is filled with people not doing anything. It's mostly that, right? And and that is correct. And one of the things the mayor said is, yes, we wish we could do more, and we and we always do. But we are also very strategic about looking at um, comp comparisons. We do a comp study every year that we share with the council members. Um, and it, it, but when you start talking about a raise you start talking about a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, a 3% increase for police and fire was almost $9 million. Yeah. That's a, that's, that's a huge percent, big, that's 90% percent of, our growth. of our growth. Yeah, that's all the growth that's and growth. so then to, um, and you, you know, you don't want to continually um, give raises to some employees and segregate the other employees. And so a 1% to the general employees was almost another million and a half. So basically we spent the whole 10 million yeah that we've been worked very hard on reinvesting back into our employees. F with five minutes left here, let me ask you, there, is, there are a whole lot of development going on in Memphis, private development, public development, quite a bit of really big sort of private public, however you want to define that project. So of this operating budget and this capital budget, how much of it is going towards, say, the Riverfront uh, Tomley Park redevelopment proposal? Uh, not much. <laughs> I mean, what, what is that? I, I mean, I mean, uh, I know I'm putting you on the spot. And I right. And I'm, I don't remember the exact amount of the grant that that is built into that, but it's not it's not much. The majority of the capital projects are on the new libraries, on the new fire stations. So and that, on those and again, what part of what I'm asking is is that the funding of the the public government funding of the 70, 60, 70 million dollar riverfront project is separate. A separate revenue stream. Yes. That's what, yes. Yeah. And but one of the things we are looking at um, is expanding the areas and looking at um, opportunities where we can partner with businesses and philanthropy uh, to help fund those projects that do not fit within kind of the mold of city government right. funded projects. And then you know for big sort of development projects like say the Union Row development, which is a big private development, but it's got tax incentives associated with it, or other some of you know FedEx moving uh, one of its you know, logistics headquarters downtown, which gets pilot. From your point of view, is that is that the city paying out money? Um, actually, I think the tax in incentives. We could do another whole show on the We've on done this. A couple. <laughs> it's, just, it's just that um, when we compare uh, a negative revenue to a positive revenue, it makes a huge difference in how you view what those what the pilots are, what a TIF may be. It, it, let me go to you on that on the pilots. I mean, is that a place where? you think the city, I mean, some people will listen to the show and listen to this debate and say, well, the city wouldn't have all this trouble if they didn't give away all these tax abatements, these lower taxes in pilot projects that bring, you know, be it FedEx Logistics or Union Row, or we could go on and on and on. Your take on that? I think that they are necessary evil, if you would. However, I think that we should be a little bit more selective in the industries that we decide to incentivize. I served as the council's liaison to the EDGE board for two years. And what I found is that we we were not intentional. It seems like if you checked all the boxes, which you, most of, most corporations do, you get the same amount of pilots. So if we talking about the eighty thousand dollar jobs that are associated with FedEx Logistics, well, another company coming in that where the majority of the staff is making thirteen dollars an hour, they get the same type of incentive. So I think that we need to be a little bit more deliberate in how we do it. Three minutes, Bill. Kim. Well, what do you think about where we are on incentives? Is there room for, for change there? Keeping in mind that we just had a big discussion about our economic development approach. Yeah, I, mean, I think we're always going to be turning the dials on, on this. There's been a big community debate about it for the last year, and I think we'll continue to focus on it and uh, making sure that our economic development strategies uh, line up with our growth plan for the community and that we're bringing as many jobs and capital here to lift the, the boats of all people. That is, that, that's the goal. And we want to keep every dollar of tax revenue that we can. Um, but the reality is that it's not just Memphis. This happens everywhere. I wish that no cities and no states had incentives and you just competed on your community. But you can't just have a unilateral putting down your arms, uh, putting you know down your weapons. And um, these are a reality to make some of these projects go in Memphis and in every city. Um, even in, in you know in, in anywhere and so but we our goal is to get as much economic development because that's jobs that's opportunity but in growing our economy and keeping as much tax revenue as we can we, we, we talked just a bit ago about a comparison between Memphis and Nashville um, uh, should we try to be like Nashville is should we have the kind of rapid growth that Nashville has had in their economy with the government kind of trailing behind it 
at times? Um, I, I don't think so. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to be Nashville. Uh, I, want, I want to be Memphis. Uh, Memphis is an authentic city. It's our, one of our core competitive advantages. And uh, I'd like to grow faster. I think over the next decade, you're going to see, you're going to see the best decade that we've ever had in Memphis over the last 10 years. I truly believe that. So I want to grow faster, and I think we can. But Nashville's like unrecognizable now. I mean, I saw the other day they've got like this rolling aquarium, like a party aquarium. They've got tractors rolling down Broadway. <laughs> uh, you know, they're cutting down their trees to have a one-time event. And uh, I don't want to be Nashville, but I want to be Memphis. That is our, it's our secret sauce. And you're going to see better growth and a great decade, I think, for our city. Uh, only because we talked to you, we had you on about a month ago and talked to you about 3.0 with just 30 seconds. I don't, where do you stand on Memphis 3.0? It's at council. It, it's hit some, the last conversation with three council members that we had, it seemed like it was green lights and on its way. Where do you stand on Memphis 3.0? I, th I think it is. I, I just provided, a, you know, a commitment to the to the constituents, the people that I serve, that it will be a comprehensive review before I, I vote on it. And I've been doing that. And, and for you, you mentioned it, it, it isn't just a plan on the shelf in the sense for you. You talked about tying. It's the first time I've heard anybody talking about spending priorities tied to that so far. That's correct. Um, and I was fortunate just, enough when I came on as CFO to become part of the advisory committee for 3.0. So I came in on the tail end of it. But it all makes sense that okay. it's comprehensive together. All right. I, I didn't give you enough time on that. Sorry about that. <laughs> no but fair. thank you. You'll come back. We'll talk about all these things awesome. some more. And thank you all for joining us. Join us again next week.